Hey, we're back. Yeah, sorry. No, yeah. Uh, no worries. My privacy settings, I guess, had to be reset. Okay. So, is that coming through? Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Great. Thanks, everyone. Away. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for your for your patience. Sorry about that. Um, as Rob said, my name is Tara O'Shea, and I lead forest programs here at Planet. I'm really excited to share a bit more about the NICFI satellite data program today. I think many of you are, are likely familiar with this program, maybe are, are using it already, um, but excited to share for those who are not familiar, as well as share um, just some exciting updates and, and new initiatives underway for those who are. So as a quick agenda for, uh, for this session, I'm going to give a, a quick overview of both Planet and the NICFI satellite data program. Uh, we actually are, it's, it's hard to believe, but we are almost a year into the program now. So I'm excited to share some impact and user story examples to date. And then lastly, I'm excited to discuss a recent collaboration that we announced this week with Microsoft Planetary Computer and Geo. And then hopefully we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. I know that there is the, the Q&A chat box here and excited to, to hear from all of you. So first, for those who are not familiar with Planet, I tend to say that Planet has a bit of a mantra and that is that you can't fix what you can't see. And you know we really think this is at the root of a lot of our global sustainability and, and climate crises. And it's the small piece of the puzzle that we are trying to help solve through innovative space technologies. So Planet's mission is to image the full earth every day in order to make global change visible, accessible and actionable. So how do we go about doing this? How do you image the full earth every day? Well, Planet has actually launched the largest constellation of Earth observing satellites in human history, but most of these satellites are really quite small. So what you see here is an illustration of our Dove constellation. This is over a hundred small or cube sats in a sun synchronous orbit, such that as the Earth rotates underneath them, they image the same place at the same time every day at about three and a half meters per pixel. Um, this is complemented by our SkySat constellation, which you also see, see here. This is a more traditional tasked satellite system. So you can point these very high resolution satellites to image anywhere on Earth uh, daily at 30 centimeters per pixel. So both of these constellations are imaging in four spectral bands. So the red, green, blue, as well as near infrared. Um, and the Dove constellation is actually moving from four to eight bands. So what you see here is a demonstration of, you know, in, in tandem especially, this provides just a really unprecedented Earth observation capacity where you can image the full Earth daily at about three and a half meters per pixel and then zoom in in an area of interest or change at that 30 centimeters for the higher resolution. Oh, and is it going to let me out of the animation? Let's see, maybe not. <laughs> so what, what does this mean for tropical forest monitoring? Um, the, the sort of having these high spatial and temporal resolution data sets come online. Um, well, in many respects, I think in the forest and climate and land use space, we are, we're actually very lucky because we've been using satellite data to monitor changes in these systems for decades. Um, and a lot of that is thanks to the Landsat mission, right? We're, we are used, we have a you know, multi-decade um, understanding and sort of uh, record of these sorts of changes. Um, I was actually very excited to see Landsat 9 launch this week from, from here in, in California. Um, and so we're very fortunate, I think, that you know, we've, we've been using satellites to understand these changes for a long time. We've had a lot of leadership through the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change in understanding you know, the role of forests in regulating our, our global climate. Um, but what Planet is, is bringing to the table, again, with, with our 
sort of small piece of, of earth observation technologies is additional higher spatial and temporal resolution information that can complement these, these public missions. Um, so what you see here is, is planet scope image um, at, the, at the native 3.7 meters per pixel. And again, the opportunity to have this refresh daily, which is of course, particularly important in the tropics where, where we have you know, a lot of clouds and the opportunity to, to get that information um, not only in a broad area, but also through the clouds is extremely important. And so what is exciting about the NICFI data program is for the first time, uh, there is comprehensive access to high resolution monitoring across the tropics um, to help us better understand, uh, but also work to reduce and reverse tropical forest loss. Um, so the NICFI data program, for those who are not familiar, is a coalition of partners. Um, it was launched by the Norwegian government, who through its Ministry of Climate and Environment awarded an international contract to Kongsberg Satellite Services, who in partnership with Planet and Airbus are providing the comprehensive access um, to this new high resolution tropical monitoring system. The purpose of the NICFI data program is in support of this mission to reduce and reverse tropical forest loss, contributing to the combating of climate change, conserving biodiversity and facilitating sustainable development. Um, so that is the goal that we are supporting this global user base um, with these new high resolution data products. And again, I actually, I think many at FOS4G are, are familiar with the program, probably have already signed up um, to access it at some point, I hope, but I did wanna provide a quick overview of just what data products are available and through which licensed access levels. Um, so what you see here is a summary of, of the program, um, which really I think was, was quite innovative in its design. Uh, in that it wants to enable you know, both technical as well as non-technical users. And again, the goal is to really create comprehensive access um, for, for this shared goal. So the first level that uh, we think of as level zero, this is a visual base map product um, covering that full tropical area of interest. So this product is optimized for visual display and visual interpretation. It is available to all through our purpose ally partners, um, such as Global Forest Watch, Map Biomass, and FAO. So if you go to any of these platforms, let's say you are a journalist or a local commun community member on the ground, there will be high resolution visual information for you to interpret um, on the ground uh, in, in your community. The next level that we think of as, as level one, um, this is a four band analysis ready base map. Uh, so this again is that pantropical mosaic that is optimized for analysis. So it is corrected for atmospheric um, surface reflectance. It uh, includes that fourth near infrared band. And this is available under a CC NC license in support of that NICFI mission. Um, so this is this is a level probably where we have the most users and I'll, I'll touch on that a bit more in a minute. And you see some examples of just a few of the entities um, that are using it. But what's available through this level is the ability to download, to stream, to make derivative products um, towards fulfilling this, this shared purpose and this work. And then lastly, the, there is what we call level two, um, and this is a scenes level access. So users here have access to the planet scenes that go into those visual and analytic pantropical mosaics. Um, and they also have access to the Airbus spot archive scenes that date back to 2002. Um, this is available only to a select number of users. They are awarded uh, by the Norwegian Ministry of Climate and Environment 
um, who has been running, uh, as some of you may have seen, so, uh, an RFP related to uh, grants for this access level. And lastly, I also want to note that this data program is operating within an ecosystem of partners. And it's been really awesome to see the way that these additional uh, geospatial platforms and tools are helping these users um, use this data set and especially use it in combination with the other data sets um, that are available out there. So now that we have a sense of what the data products are, I also just wanted to touch quickly on the cadence of these, of these products. So um, there are two time periods covered by the NICFI data program. First, there is an archive period. Um, and so this is a biannual or twice a year mosaic um, beginning in December, 2015 and running through August, 2020. And then there is the monitoring uh, time period, and that begins uh, at the start of the program in September 2020, and that is a monthly cadence. So from September 2020 onwards, um, you will see the full tropics refreshed every month at this high resolution in these base map products. And so again, you know, what does this mean in practice? Well, for the first time, we have comprehensive access to cloud-free sub five meter per pixel imagery across the tropics. And we think that's really critical to helping facilitate a lot of solutions. And importantly, getting these different sectors operating off the same set of information. Um, so again, I think many of you here are aware of the program and I hope have, have signed up uh, to, to it. I want to leave these links on the screen for a few minutes um, or for you know a minute um, just to make sure that you know where to turn to find out more. So if you have not signed up already, you can do so at planet.com slash NICFI. There's more information on the program, the licensing terms for the data, all of that you can find there. We've also created a number of technical resources in the Planet Developer Center. So if you check out developers.planet.com slash um, there's, there's a ton of documentation there to, to help you with everything from the product specifications on the base maps to the APIs and delivery. And then lastly, our partners at KSAT are running a help desk for the program. So if you do not find the information that you need in the resources above, you can always reach out to nickfee-servicedesk at ksat.no. Okay, so I mentioned earlier, you know, believe it or not, we are almost one year into this program. I think we're about 11 months in. Um, and so I'm really excited to share some impact and user stories to date. Um, and I just want to say, you know, the team, the data program team loves hearing from all of you. And so I'm, I'm going to make that clear at multiple points, but it's, it's been really awesome to see some of these user stories come to life. Um, and I, I want to encourage you all to keep, you know, publishing your research and, and sharing and feel free to reach out to us um, as you find new things in the data, because that's really the power of this program is putting it into all of your hands. Um, so first at a high level, again, uh, this is, you know, the first time that there's comprehensive access to high resolution data across the full tropics. Um, and what you see here is an illustration of these monthly mosaics um, within Google Earth Engine where registered NICFI users um, can now access. But the idea um, that we have this kind of high resolution for, for time series analyses um, and a number of other applications is, is just really great and, and sort of unprecedented. So again, some, some impact of the program to date. Um, we have had over 8,500 users register to the level one access, which is phenomenal. These users are from over 130 countries. Uh, those visual base maps now account for almost two thirds of the total base map selections on Global Forest Watch. Um, this number is growing nearly by a quarter, um, quarter over quarter. 70% of the users surveyed uh, noted that the NICFI data is their primary imagery source. 
um, we're seeing you know, over 15 million tiles streamed from the, the Planet APIs. Um, so again, it's just been really incredible to, to see this adoption um, in the forest and climate community. And I cannot emphasize enough how much the program team likes to hear from all of you. We, we really incorporate the feedback of what you're doing into our enablement training, into our production. Um, and so please, when you see a survey from us, or even just if you have the opportunity to reach out or share what you're doing, um, we, we absolutely love to hear it. And so I wanna share just a few examples that we've seen from our, our user community, you know, putting this to work for tropical forest conservation. Um, Planet has been running quarterly blog posts, perhaps uh, that some of you have seen, really highlighting some, some of these user stories. We know that there are more out there, but, but these are just a few. So this first example, this is from Amazon Conservation. Um, you can see here, Amazon Conservation is using those visual base maps um, and the level one mosaics within Global Forest Watch to um, detect and alert on illegal deforestation in protected areas. Um, so what you see here is an example of just one month's difference, um, the extent of deforestation that's happening in a national park in Colombia, for example. Um, and again, it's really great to get this data into the hands of a group like Amazon Conservation, who has the capacity to alert officials on the ground to take action. Uh, this is another example with the level one data, the analysis ready base maps of the tropics. Um, this is with the Central, Central African Forest Initiative, uh, which is a coalition of the six Congo Basin countries. And our partners within the forestry department at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has actually been running technical workshops with, with CAFI. Um, to drive uh, technical time series analyses that allow for the, the better detection of forest degradation. Um, again, so fine scale disturbances like selective logging that were difficult, if not impossible, um, to detect at lower spatial resolutions. Um, and they're also not only using the data to detect and classify degradation, but also to better understand the drivers of deforestation in the region. And again, that's something that it, it may be easy to discern land cover changes in, in lower resolution data, but where the higher resolution data can really complement that is providing some insight into what is the land use driver driving that, that cover change. And actually along those same lines here is Another example from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, again, the Forestry Department, which works with many of the partner uh, countries in this program. Here's an example of how they are using the level two scenes data to better classify drivers of deforestation. So again, this idea of sort of complementing the lower resolution information with this high resolution insight on what's actually um, going in, you know, why is this forest being converted and what is that new land use? Um, and this really helps get at solutions for reducing pressure on forests from global markets. And that's a key goal for this program as we think about how do we equip countries and commodities companies and others to better understand where there are these pressures and these risks, um, you know, to convert forests, which uh, we so desperately need for our, our climate solutions um, into these other land uses and, and understanding that nexus. Um, lastly, here's an example that uh, the government of Mozambique actually presented at last year's Planet Explorer conference. Um, this is, I think, a really excellent example showing how they are improving their forest area change estimations using the planet scenes. Um, and so again, you can see how they're using these data sets in tandem, um, driving deforestation classifications with sentinel powered models, but then you know, using the high resolution data to 
not only validate those changes, but also improve the measurement, which is a key um, aspect of, of the reporting um, into the UNFCCC process. Okay, and lastly, I wanted to touch on an exciting collaboration and initiative that we announced this week, and that is a collaboration with Microsoft Planetary Computer and the group on Earth Observations. Um, I hope that you all have had the chance to see this uh, here at FOS4G and in the Microsoft track in particular, um, but this has launched a request for proposals from Microsoft for researchers. And these researchers have the opportunity to combine this NICFE uh, high resolution satellite data of the tropics within planetary computer um, to help advance this mission of reducing and reversing tropical forest loss. Um, so this RFP is now open on the GEO website. Uh, the winners receive uh, funding from Microsoft, storage credits on Azure, um, technical support, and again, will be amongst the first to access um, NICFI data over their study areas within Planetary Computer. Um, so we're very excited about this, and I can't wait to see what, what type of projects uh, are submitted in, in that process. And so with that, I just I want to say thank you, especially to the Microsoft team, to the FOS4G team. There's been so many excellent conversations this week. Um, I want to remind everyone to please go learn more at planet.com slash And then I also want to remind you that we love hearing from you. So please do reach out. Um, please you know, be on the lookout for surveys from our team. We, we really are doing this in the service of all of you, putting the data to work towards forest and climate goals. Um, and so with that, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions and I'll, I'll pop back over to that chat box. Awesome, thanks so much, Tara. Yeah, very excited about that, um, that grants program and, and uh, you know, excited what folks will do with this uh, really valuable data set um, and uh, the planetary computer. Um, so I don't yeah. see it. I was just going to say, I think that's that's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm excited even just to see the applications, um, the project ideas that, that people have. And I think one of the coolest things about this program has been seeing what people who have a subject matter expertise or a local expertise can do once, you know, the data is in their hands. It's just beyond what someone sitting in, in my case in California could could imagine um, because everyone has their own you know knowledge and so that's that's part of I think the power in in this program um, and I certainly think that will be the case for some of the scientific RFPs that and, and applications that your team receives as well for sure yeah I really hope to see some some of that like you know RFPs from areas that will use it to um, really track deforestation or do research in their own in their own areas or uh, teams of people that are focused on um, you know local stakeholders I think that's sort of the best way to to actually make the right decisions and, and, and produce uh, the right action so yeah really yeah. excited to see what happens totally totally and it's really cool to kind of see these parallel advances in like yes there are these new remote sensing data sets but like to have that in parallel with something like cloud computing and, and platforms, it's it's just so different than it was even a few years ago. And I think the combination is is potentially really powerful, right? Like people can actually power all new modeling capabilities maybe. Um, so, so really excited to see that. Awesome. Well, if there's um, no questions from the audience, I'll just give a second. Uh, to make sure, but otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Tara. Really appreciate awesome. it, and uh, have a great rest of your conference. Thanks, Rob. You, you too. Talk soon. Yeah, bye. Bye.